Hello, Professional Fellows Program participants. I'm Dr. Natalie Cook with a short lesson on conducting virtual focus groups. First, I'll start by introducing you to focus groups and discuss the what, why, and how to do them, not only during the pandemic, but also beyond. Then I'll go over creating a question guide or interview protocol to guide your focus group conversation. Then I'll offer you some tips and best practices for conducting successful virtual focus groups. Let's get started. What are focus groups? Focus groups are an effective qualitative data collection strategy, whether standalone or as part of a mixed methods evaluation project. They're a guided 60 to 90 minute conversation about an identified topic. Participants in focus groups have a shared experience. Focus groups range in rigidity to flexibility and they really yield rich insights that can be used in the planning stages or to gather feedback about a program or initiative. Here's a quick overview of the focus group process. First, you create your materials. You develop a question guide, which we'll get to in the next section. You come up with a consent form and share that with participants to make sure that they actually agree to participate. Then you develop recruitment materials to get participants to participate in the focus group. These can include flyers, email messages, ads to share on social media, and so on. If you're conducting a focus group just for an internal program of planning or evaluation, you don't need human subjects approval. However, if you would like to share your results publicly, you'll need to work with your institution to obtain institutional review board approval, just to be sure that your focus group plan and materials are ethical. Next, you recruit participants and actually conduct the focus groups. The facilitator guides the conversation, but does not actively participate in sharing her or his own ideas. The note taker takes notes on the conversation that can be the facilitator or another person. And finally, you analyze and report the notes as well as the transcripts. You code for themes, which are similar items that keep coming up. And you highlight exemplary quotes that really speak to some of the takeaways from the focus group. You also make notes of frequencies, noting which themes came up more often and which ones were more unique. Why conduct focus groups? One reason is that focus group conversations can yield deeper insights than a survey. The social group dynamic allows for cross-pollination as participants share ideas, bounce off of each other, and maybe even talk about things that you didn't ask about, which can sometimes be helpful. In that way, focus groups are generative and can even help you refine or ask new evaluation questions about a different aspect of your program initiative or service. When conducting focus groups, be open to participants discussing emergent or unplanned but relevant topics. Again, this could help you ask a new related evaluation question about a different aspect of your program. It could also help you to dig deeper and further investigate an emergent theme. You might learn something new about your program. Assuming that your participants have internet access, virtual focus groups can be a safe and accessible evaluation data collection strategy, not only during the pandemic when physical distancing is important, but also beyond because they can help you overcome barriers associated with transportation, as well as barriers associated with accessibility. For example, some people prefer 
speaking to writing and listening to reading. Now let's talk about creating a question guide or interview protocol to guide your focus group conversation. You start by setting the stage. Thank participants for joining and remind them of why they're here. Include the purpose or the topic of the conversation. So you might say something like, thank you all for coming here today. We're going to be talking about your experience in the blank program. Or thank you all for joining today. We are working to develop this initiative and we would love your input to help us make decisions about how we should do that. Then set discussion guidelines, such as please be respectful of one another, please take turns. It is okay for us to not agree, but please do so politely. Review functions of the online platform, such as by telling participants how to mute and unmute themselves, or how to use features like the raise a hand feature or the chat if you will have it enabled for your discussion. Ask if they have questions before you begin. If you will be recording, tell them why and ask them if they are okay with it. Have a plan for what to do if someone declines, such as offering them a separate opportunity to talk to you where you will not record or not recording altogether and simply relying on your notes. Limits and Focus your questions, but be flexible. Start with an easy opening question just to break the ice and get people comfortable with talking. Then ask about four to six other questions to help you answer your evaluation questions. I'll give you some examples in just a little bit. Allow the conversation to flow as long as the content remains relevant but do allow for ideas you did not anticipate. Close by asking additional, close by asking for additional comments, ideas, suggestions, or feedback. Now here are some examples of good focus group questions. Why did you participate in the program? What were you hoping to get out of the service? Did it meet your expectations? What was your favorite part of the program? Your least favorite? Please describe your experience with the blank part of the program. Is there something you would change about it? Would you recommend it to a friend? Why or why not? What barriers prevented you from participating fully? What would have made you feel more comfortable how has the program changed you or some aspect of your life? What were some strengths of the program? Where did it fall short? Do you have any other ideas or feedback to share? Using probes. Probes are follow-up questions that get participants to be more descriptive in their responses and help them to dig a little deeper. Examples of probes are, how so? Tell me more about that. In what way? Why might that be? Now I'll share some tips and best practices for conducting successful virtual focus groups. In the online format, three to seven participants is ideal. When conducting in-person focus groups, the recommendation can be a little bit higher for the number of participants. However, in the online setting, more than three to seven participants can be difficult to manage. Offer participants tips for navigating the online discussion, such as mute when not talking, especially if they have background noise, turn their videos off if they're having bandwidth issues, don't sit directly in front of a bright window, and so on. Group participants by likeness, such as their socioeconomic status, age, race, geographic location, 
etc. So that when you're coming up with themes, you understand which themes are more associated with which groups. Consider using two screens or a split screen. This way, you can look at your participants, observe their body language, as well as take notes electronically rather than looking down at a notebook, which can be distracting for participants. It's also a good idea to contact participants ahead of time and send them reminders. For scheduling, you can create an online form with a hyperlink to the online discussion room. You should send the consent form, Zoom tips, and login information days or a week ahead of time rather than just the morning of. An hour before the scheduled conversation, you should send a reminder email with the link as well as backup call in info to improve attendance. Here are some best practices for conducting virtual focus groups. Record when possible, not only on the online platform, but also with a backup service like otter.ai or on a separate device. Encourage, but don't require video to be on. It's helpful if it's on because it feels like a more natural conversation, but there's some equity issues associated with videos, such as different participants might have different comfort levels and bandwidth issues. Offer a call-in option for those who need it or prefer it. And don't forget that you have callers on the line. Include them in the conversation, even though you cannot see them. Discuss conversation guidelines at the beginning of the discussion. Again, such as respecting one another, taking turns, and maintaining confidentiality. Manage their expectations. Let them know that you're there to facilitate, but will not be sharing your personal perspectives and let them know the expected duration or time that the focus group will last. And close with a free response question and express gratitude for their time. So to wrap it up, don't forget, focus groups are a worthwhile qualitative evaluation tool that you can use for planning or to gather feedback about your program, project, or initiative. You start by creating materials, recruiting participants, conducting the focus group, transcribing, coding, which is the summarizing of themes, and reporting. Follow best practices and be open to emergent topics.